So you just click this video and I'm just guessing that you're thinking to yourself, how do I make my dull, boring photos become beautiful masterpieces by just, you know, sliding a few sliders in Lightroom? Well, you're at the right place, my friend. For the last seven years of my life, I've been editing photos on almost a daily basis. And in this video, I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough on how to use Lightroom Classic and also all of the little secrets and the fun stuff within this program. But the first thing we are going to do is crucial, but also really simple. We need to import a photo to Lightroom. And you do this by just dragging a photo into a library like this. Now, personally, I like to use Lightroom to select the photos from my shoot. So I import it here from the SD card. And let's just, uh, if you double tap, you get this here. And you can always go back, if you click down here, into this view here. But double tap and click here. And what I like to do, I like to go through my photos. If you press, what is these called? You know, the arrow keys here. Just go left and right like this. And you select photos by pressing P. So if you press P on your keyboard like this, P, you are picking this. You can see down here. If you pick here, take it off. P, it's on. All right. And then you can go through and pick a few that you like. Let's say we like this one too. All right. Very simple. And then all you have to do is just to press import. Now with the photo that we want to edit selected, we go to the develop tab. And this is where I'm going to focus like the almost the entire tutorial because this is where the magic happens. And this, my friends, is where we edit the photo. So you have a bunch of different tabs. If I let me close them here for simplification, you have a bunch of different tabs here. This might seem intimidating in the beginning, but it, it I mean, it's just like with everything they're doing for the first time. It isn't when you start to learn it. So the first one we're going to focus on is the basic tab. This is where you do the majority of your exposures. So you have the exposure tab just here. All right. You have the contrast right here. Then you have highlights, which is the highlights of your photo, shadows, whites, blacks, and then you have texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance, and saturation. All right. And one thing here is by default, I think this is set something like this here. So I personally like to start by taking a holding here and dragging this out this just gives me like the sliders become a little bit bigger and it gives me more wiggle room and more like i can be more precise with the sliders now before we go into all of these sliders here then i personally this is my point of reference i like to put the like find the crop first and crop the photo so the up here, you see this rectangle here, you click it, you go to the crop mode. Now you can see that there you have the strange lines here. If you press O on your keyboard, you change to all of these different lines. I usually just keep this one here. Down here, you can see you have these different aspect ratios. I want this to be a four by five, like so. And then you can just line it up. Now, if this photo right here were all crooked, then an easy way to straighten it would just to be click auto here and Lightroom would automatically straighten it. Now, this photo isn't really crooked, but what you can also do if you go on the, on the edges here of this, then you can turn it however you want, okay? And also by doing the edges here, you can re resize it and then you can size it however you want, all right? Now, one thing also, it sometimes is locked, then you can't, then you, like the aspect ratio is locked, but if you want to do a different aspect ratio, you can just click the lock button here and now you can move it however you want, all right? But I want to keep this aspect ratio and I think this is fine by now and then I just press enter. So with the exposure, and the basic corrections, there are a lot of things that you can do. And I just like in editing in general, it's just good to get your creativity to flow freely. But a good nice thing that I often like to do just as a starting point is to press command or alt on a an, on an PC and you and Lightroom will automatically expose the photo for you. This is the same as if we do this, we take this back. So control send, like we all know that in, in taking back everything. But here we can also press auto up here and Lightroom will automatically do the exposure for you based on what it thinks is perfect. Now, this is by no means a like finished product or whatever. This is just a good starting point. And I think this is nice to do this in the beginning to get the exposure pretty good. And then I can like go afterwards and I'm like, okay, this is a little bit too bright for my liking. I'd like to take down the highlights just a tiny bit up with the contrast, the shadows, I'm taking up the shadows. And all of these sliders is if you drag them up, you're increasing the shadows. And if you drag them down, you're making the effect like stronger. Okay. One tip that comes in handy very often that I want to add here is that you can double tap on all of the sliders in Lightroom to reset them. Nice. Now up here, you have the white balance. So really simply speaking, then white balance is like adjusting colors in a picture to make sure that the white things in the pictures, that they actually look white. Even when the light around them is a little bit different. And here, if you want to, you can change the white balance. If you drag this down to the blue side, the image becomes blue. And if you drag it down to the orange sides, you add more orange to it. And why is here in the tint? More green and more 
uh, magenta and the other side. A nice thing also is they have a pen. This pen here, if you click on it anywhere you want, you are telling Lightroom that this is the white point and it will make it white. So it's really nice to find something white in your picture and use it. So here the house, it is pretty white. Here is a white, click it, and now it will make sure that this area is white. I think it became way too blue for my liking, but you can also have the clouds here and it will make the clouds they are the white point, okay? Now the texture and clarity is something that you just add some sharpness and uh, some more oomph to your photos. You can play around with these. I would not like ad advise you to be a little bit subtle with them. Either you can go down to make a more dreamy effect like this, or if you go up, you make everything like just more oomphy and nice looking. And dehaze is a really nice slider to like, if it's a little bit misty around you, you can actually take that and give like a little more oomph here too. So you can easily just play around with this also. So when it comes to the vibrance and saturation, you can think of vibrance as a smart tool that brightens up the dull colors in a picture without touching the already bright colors too much. On the other hand, however, saturation is like turning up the color volume on everything in a picture and making all colors more intense. So basically, if you drag up the saturation, you're saturating the entire image, while vibrance is a little smart tool that is trying to make the colors that aren't as saturated more saturated without making the entire photo super saturated. I usually like to have these, uh, play with these, uh, you know, in uh, together, you know? Now this was all the basic adjustments and where you get the exposure. Next is the tone curve. Now the tone curve is a really smart little curve. Basically what this is, up here you have your white tones, all right? And down in the middle you have your mid tones. And down here you have your blacks. And by moving the tone curve down you make everything darker and by moving it up you make everything brighter but the cool thing is that you can actually make these nodes anywhere that you like and then you can individually like here are the like shadow things blacks remember shadows mid-tones highlights and whites and now by doing a curve like this and doing an anchor point here we can now drag down just the shadows of the picture making them darker all right and up here we can now drag up just the bright parts, making them brighter. And this, what you're looking at here, is a simple S-curve. This is a really simple, like, <laughs> tone curve. And this is usually what you often do. So you can take it like this, take it down a little bit like this, and now you've made contrast to your picture by making the darker darker and making the brighter parts brighter. Now you can also drag up here. This is if you want to get a little bit creative. If you drag up here, you're basically making the dark parts not dark so they aren't totally black and this is how you would create fade to your photos so look if i do it really extreme you can now see how we get a really faded vintage look because we've raised the black parts here so they're not black anymore but basically you can just create all of these little anchor points and then you can move individual parts around and massaging the curve until you find like uh, the exposure that you are happy with really 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 nice now to begin with I would advise you just to play around with the tone curve like this. And by the way, I think when you open this up for the first time, it probably looks like this. You cannot make any anchor points and you're just dragging individual tones like this. If you want to have the anchor points, you see here, you go from this part to this part, and now you can make the anchor points that I showed you. A cool thing here that you can also do is that if you hold an alt on your keyboard while moving the tone curve, it moves much slower. So it can be a little bit fast and hard to be precise with it, but holding an alt will fix that problem for you. Then something that is more advanced is something that I would advise you to play around with later, is that here you have the red tones, and here you have the green tones and blue tones. And you can actually play around with the red and the greens, but this is getting a little bit advanced, and I think it might be overwhelming if you're here <laughs> playing with this for the first time. So so stick with just this for the beginning and then when you feel like you are ready to you know take on Lightroom then you can play around with these colors as well. Now next we have the color mixer and this is where things get extremely extremely fun and where Lightroom really really shines in my opinion. So you have here the hue, saturation and luminance or if you want to you can have all up if you want to have like this. And by the way we are in the mixer. You can also go in point color. This is fairly new and I'm gonna leave this for a later tutorial because now we're just gonna focus on the mixer in the beginning so um, you're not get too overwhelmed because I know there's a lot of information to take in when you're doing this for the first time. But my friends, this is not hard. If you do this hand in hand, we can easily figure this out. So if you start with the hue, then basically these are sliders that you can change the color in a really fun and a powerful way. So let's take the yellow parts in the beginning to start with and by moving them to the to the left side, you make the yellows more orange and removing to the right side, you make them more green. Very, very, very simple. You can do this to all of the colors. The blue, make it more turquoise or make it more purple. And you see, and you, this, is, this is like 
This is really where you change the tones of your color, of your every color. It's in so good. And here you can have, like I can only spend hours on just these sliders, sliding them a little bit and just having a really good time, putting a little bit good music. Oh, I love it, my friends. Now, another cool thing here is that if you want to like change the color of this grass, you're not totally sure what exactly color is this grass. So it seems like a little bit yellow, a little bit green. What you can do is if you see this little pointing tool here, if you click it, now you can go to the grass and by scrolling on your mouse like this, look what happens. You, Lightroom will change the colors of the exact tones that are underneath. And you can see that these are like the orange and, and, and uh, yellow, all right? And same, let's zoom out here, zoom out like this. And now you wanna do the blue part, you just scroll and Lightroom will change the color of the blue. And you can see that there's a tiny bit of purple in that blue too, all right? Very, 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 very cool. I love this tool. And you can basically go around here and you want to change this. All right, a little bit yellow. We can just scroll here and have... <laughs> so fun. You see how you change everything? And saturation, this is the same thing. Here you're just changing the saturation. You want to take down the blue? Just take down the blue like this. So the saturation is the intensity of the color. And here you can take down the green or the yellow, or all the colors here. We don't have to go in, in detail here because this is getting repetitive. <laughs> and luminance, this is the brightness of each color. So look what happens if we take the luminance of the blue and take that up, it becomes a lot brighter. You see, and take it down, it becomes less bright. So a, a cool little technique I often do is I like to sometimes desaturate the blue so they're not too blue, but then I like to often to take down the luminance so it becomes, so the sky pops a little bit, but it's not as blue. This is a little stylish look that personally I like a whole lot. And yeah, this is like, have fun here, have nuts. This is by far one of my favorite tools in Lightroom. And yeah, just uh, go for it, my friend. But we are nowhere near finished. There's a whole lot here to learn. So next, we can take this down so we can see. Next, let's go to the color grading. This is an incredibly powerful tool that is extremely fun to use too. I obviously <laughs> I think that everything here is extremely fun to use. So here you have a color wheel. And a color wheel, it might seem a little bit strange in the beginning, but it isn't really. Let me explain to you in detail how we're gonna use this. So here you have all three, but up, if you click here, now we have just the shadows, just the midtones, and just the highlights. So basically what this is, if we start with the shadows, now you can push whatever color that you like into the shadows. So if you take it all to the extreme, now we're pressing blue into the shadows, here we're pushing green, here we're pushing red, or like yellow, and you, you understand what I'm doing, all right? You can also do click here, and Lightroom has these presets of colors, so if a blue here, and it, it does it like this. And now you can make the shadows more like, you can make them um, like bluer if you want to, or whatever color you want. So this I really much like to use. You might, a vintage look is often to make the shadows a little bit like more orange, or whatever. So yeah, this is a really, really powerful tool. And I, <laughs> do I like it? Yes, I do. So another thing here also to keep in mind is that you have the luminous too. So if you want to, you can make the shadows darker here as well or brighter if you want to, all right? Same with the mid-tones. You can push whatever color you want in the mid-tones. And if you, again, one thing I don't think I've, I've told you guys, if you double tap on whatever, like all the sliders will be doing, just double tap, you reset them, all right? One thing that I also think is good to know is that you can like increase the saturation by both dragging it on the color wheel like you're seeing me here, but also down here you can up the saturation and beside it you see the hue and you can change the hue here too if you want to be super precise. And then the highlights, you can push whatever color you want in the highlights, make them, make them warmer, make them colder, it's your choice. Editing is all about <laughs> letting your creativity flow, all right? So you double tap and it, it becomes like this. Then you have two sliders here that are good to know what doing, you have the blending, so let's have a little like this, so we have just the extremes to see what's happening, and we have this in the, like this, so we have two extreme colors here. If we do the blending, if I'm not mistaken, this is like Lightroom trying to blend these more together, and then the balance slider is basically, if you move it to the left side, you make the changes that you made to the shadow areas more dominant, so you may, remember we made the blue to the shadows, so now they become more dominant, and if we move it to the right, you make these changes that we did to the highlight more dominant. So it's basically, yeah, basically that and we can now reset this, we don't need that. But this, my friends, is something that I use all the time and I really, really much like it. Then you have detail right, right here. This is where you can sharpen your photo. A pro tip here is that instead of sharpening the photo like this and sharpening the entire photo, you can actually do the masking here. If you hold an Alt on your keyboard, you can create a little mask. And basically what this is doing is that 
Everything that is white that you're seeing now is being sharpened. But by moving the slider up like this, you see less and less in white and only the white areas here are being sharpened. So everything that's black is not being affected by the sharpening slider. Love that. And this is so good because often when you're sharpening the photo, you don't want to sharpen the entire photo because if you sharpen everything, you just get a lot of digital noise in areas that you won't, don't need to have noise. You don't need to have the sky here sharpened, but it's really nice to maybe sharpening the house, just the subject, maybe the mountain, and that you do by doing this right here. Now this here is the denoise slider, the denoise, like the new AI denoise, it's so good. All you have to do really is just to click on it like this, and then you can play around with the amount here, and the click enhance and let Lightroom do its magic, and it will like honestly denoise things in a way that you could never do before. It's so good, and nowadays I don't worry that much about going too high on the ISO or getting too much digital noise, because I know that this tool here, it will save my sorry butt when I do that, so it's so good. Then you have lens correction. So basically, when you like the lenses that you're using in the cameras, they have some flaws, and this is how you can like just by just clicking enabling lens correction, it will do that. And and because of the metadata in the photo, Lightroom knows what I was using, what lens I used. I used the Sigma Art, this one here, the 24 to 70 millimeter, and it has some flaws here, some distortions, and Lightroom makes them better. And then you can also remove chromatic aberration. Next, you have transform here. I don't really do this a lot. I rarely ever, you know, mess around with these sliders at all. They're really funky in my opinion, but I sometimes press the level and it will like level out the photo. If it was a little bit crooked or anything, it just makes sure that everything is leveled out and even. So I might press that from time to time. Then down here you have lens blur. This is like totally new, but it can add some uh, like uh, artificial bokeh to your image. It Sometimes it looks pretty nice. You can just easily play around with it if you want to. And then you have effects. This is a tab that I like a whole lot. Here you add vignette. So you can add more vignette, less vignette. If you just make it extreme, you can move it like how you want feather it out. Here, this is cool. If I move this in up, you're letting in the highlights. So the highlights are showing in through the mask here or through the vignette. And yeah, basically that's it. And here you add grain. This, like those who follow me, you know that I really like grain. So here I add a little bit of grain and you can have the size of the grain and the roughness or whatever. And down here you have calibration. This is how you can change the, like the hue of the primary colors. Like I use this in combination with the HSL sliders very often. So just to give you a little bit of tutorial here, if you move this down, the prime, the primary blue primary colors, you change the hue of them and vice versa up here. And here is the green primary colors and the red primary colors. And then you have the saturation of the one as well. And I often like to play around with this, these to get a little extra look that I think looks good and here before and after. Now, one thing that I want to add here is that on all of these things, you can always go up to this little eye here and see the before and after of the changes that you're doing really, really well. And while we're also talking about before and after, you can also always press Y on your keyboard to get a before and after to see all the changes you've been doing. Really nice, <laughs> really, really like this, you know? Now, so far we've gone through all of the tabs. However, this wouldn't be a complete tutorial if it didn't show you my favorite thing that I do on, you know, when I'm editing photos and that using the masks. So up here, you can cl click and create masks. So look like this. And now you have a bunch of different masks that you can choose from. You can have these like uh, masks that are like automatic masks. So basically Lightroom, if you click sky, Lightroom will create an like perfect mask around the sky. And now you can uh, do any change that you want to just this area. All right. And if you want to create a new one, you click plus and let's just use the brush tool to start with. So this is a brush tool. Here you have, you can change the size of the brush. I like to use the scroller here to change the size of the brush like this. You have the feather and density and the flow. And basically if we just, now we can brush wherever we want and you can see everything becomes red. If you don't see this red thing, you can press O on your keyboard and it's either hide it or you can see. And the red is basically showing us where the mask is. So all the changes that we're gonna do are gonna take place on this red thing right here. Now I have auto mask on here. So basically auto mask is just helping me. You can see how perfect it became around this subject. That's because I have auto mask on. So Lightroom will <coughs> like detect where the subject is and it will help me keep that in line. But if you take auto mask off, now it just becomes everywhere, okay? So if you make a circle like this and now you can go down here and if you take up the exposure, we can like brighten the middle part a little bit. Now, if you go plus here again and create a linear gradient filter, this is a filter that I like a whole lot. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller here for you so you can see. So then if you drag up like this, so what's happening now is that 
here is where the masks start, and then it gradually becomes less and less effect. So if you just take the exposure down all the way so you can see, you can see that it becomes really dark and then less and less and less dark, all right? I use the gradient filter a lot. So for instance, here I would use it somewhere like this. We can do this again here in the fill, like so. And I would dark darken the foreground just a little bit. And then personally, I would probably make the brush tool here, do a little, or not maybe the brush tool, we already done that, but I would probably use a gradient filter. This is the same, this is just a, or a radial filter, this is just a circle. And then in the middle is where everything, where the changes are the strongest, and then it becomes less and less strong. And you can also play around here with the feather. So if you have O, so you can see here, you can see how it, how it looks like here, or if you press H, then you can see. So H, you can see it, and now it, it, where it's just yeah, feathering it out. So we can have it like this, something like so. And then we could have uh, just shadows, something like this, up with the whites and up with the contrast, like so, to make the middle part brighter. And this is a, like a little technique I love, is make a gradient filter like this. We do a gradient filter here, because the light source is here, and I want to emphasize on the light source. So we can do here, and then you can take up the exposure just a little bit. You could take up the 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 temperature to make, to like simulate or emulate like a sun. And then you can go down here to the dehaze slider and add a little bit of haze, something like this. And this is just making a little, like, is, we're like giving a little more light here, just like if we had the sun coming in here. And then I would also that do the brush and take the brush something here and make these areas a little bit darker just to to do like this. And we already added a bunch of contrast by brightening it up here and darkening here, making the photo more three-dimensional and it's really nice. And here you have all of the masks. I've showed you the brush, the gradient filter and the radiant filter. And these are like the most basic one. And then you have, of course, these AI masks here that are really nice. And I would like just so you not get too overwhelmed, just start with this. And in, in essence, it's basically just making a mask and then you can uh, add whatever you want here to the mask. Yeah, one thing that is also good to know here, if you press O on this mask, is this, if you, if you make a mask and you will go like, ah, I don't want it to be exactly here. Instead of like going Control Z, taking it away, you can actually hold an Alt on your keyboard. No, it's Alt, yeah. This Alt and Start on your keyboard, and then you get a minus mask. And now you can subtract from the mask wherever you want. So you see? It's so good, and you can do this to all of the masks, whether it is the brush tool, or you make a gradient filter like this, but you don't want it to be effect there, then you can click on it, minus, subtract with a brush, and just subtract from it, wherever you want, okay? Very, 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 very easy and simple, and so, so, so nice, we love the mask. And again, here is the little eye, you can see the difference we made, this is just like, I'm not trying to add this photo nice, but it already looked so much nicer. Here's pretty flat, here's more three-dimensional, and then I would fine-tune this. Other things I think are good to keep in mind is that if you right-click here on the background, you can change it from medium gray to white, or to black, or to dark gray, whatever you think is nicest to edit on. I usually keep it on medium gray, unless I'm doing some other special stuff that I talk about in other videos. But to keep it simple, we do it like this. If you press L on your keyboard, you make everything darker around it, and then you can press L again and everything becomes dark. This basically removes distractions, and this is so nice when you're editing photo, just to see how it would look like on a back, black background like this. And this I do a lot from time to time. So now you know the basics of Lightroom and you're ready to make your photos look so much better. However, if you want to take your editing skills to the very next level, my friend, then you need to know these 15 editing secrets that the professionals refuse to talk about.